Hey look, I got the original Quake Team Fortress running. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, I just got it running on my brand new setup over here. It's actually kind of hard to work with, and there's surprisingly not a whole lot of good information out there on it. Uh, I do have to admit that I don't know the ins and outs of this mod from almost 30 years ago, but uh, hey, there's some possibilities here. I think it'd be cool to work more with Quake Team Fortress in these types of videos. But did you know there were never actually any official maps for the original, original Team Fortress? I guess since it was a mod, none of it was ever really official. But even so, there were some popular custom maps to the mod, like the original Two Fort, or one called Well 6. Unfortunately, I'm not really sure at the moment how to actually run these custom maps in this version of Team Fortress. Though we can see from pictures, as well as some gameplay on YouTube, that the Team Fortress Classic remake of Well is a very faithful recreation. But how did this map fare when it came to the third Team Fortress game? Team Fortress 2? Y yeah Well, we're gonna find out! After the sponsor! That's right, it's Wanted! Wanted Dead! The game created by the makers of Ninja Gaiden and Dead or Alive! But this time, Alive isn't an option! Wanted Dead is a hack-and-slash set in a cyberpunk world. A hack-and-slash with guns. Which can lead to some pretty rad kills with over 50 unique finishing animations. Based on the ancient classics of yesteryear, the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era, this game offers a concise, challenging single-player adventure, and it's continuously being improved with patches. In fact, it just got a patch with a skill tree rework, weapon rebalancing, new bullet time, melee combat improvements, and a ton of other stuff. Wanted Dead is available on Xbox, Epic Games, Steam, and PlayStation, and there's also a spring sale going on right now where you could get Wanted Dead for 50% off on Steam and on Xbox. So, uh, what are you waiting for? You can use the link in the description to check it out right now. Well, well, well. And also well. And another well. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of versions of the map well. The Quake TF and TFC versions were capture the flag, but the first version of Team Fortress 2's well was 5 Control Point, which was one of the original 6 maps released with the game. However, the capture the flag version of TF2's well was released a few months later, in January 2008, and was actually the first new map added to the game. And I'll put new in quotes here because CTF Well is obviously just a modified version of Capture Point Well. As was Arena Well, which is added only a couple months after that. But it's probably not much of a surprise that TF2's CTF Well is the closest parallel to the original thing. Though all of the versions actually vary quite a bit thematically. The original is kind of castle-esque, where the TFC version has like neon toxic wastewater or something and a very industrial look. And then the TF2 version is a train yard, and it's the only one of the three with trains or any kind of moving object in the center of the map. And come to think of it, I'm not really sure why any of these are called well. Uh, they all have water, so that's something. But as soon as you leave spawn, it should become very clear that the layouts of these maps are extremely similar. You have one spawn room right across from another, with two ramps in between them leading to a higher area. However, the TFC version does only have one entrance to the flag here, as opposed to two in TF2. Then going up one of these ramps leads you to a balcony area, very reminiscent of the one in the sequel. But instead of a ramp going to the third floor, there's an elevator. And TFC really likes its elevators, but those just aren't a thing in TF2, for whatever reason. The third floor has resupplies, just like in TF2, but instead has another elevator to the flag room. And the flag room is almost completely different, so we'll get back to that a bit later. You'll notice that the exit to the main area is different as well, having only one gated door as opposed to TF2's two. And there's also no access to the water from here like there is in TF2. But outside, things do start to look familiar again with a building in the center of the map separating both sides, and some water with a bridge over it. But yet again, the TFT version only has one bridge, where TF2 has two. So, TF2 is really making use of its name here. Oh, and if you want to get back inside your base, or the enemy base, you can't just walk up to this door. You, uh, you either have to touch this button, or shoot it to open it. Which I think is interesting. If you want to get in, you better ring the doorbell. But once you get to that center building, you'll find two very narrow hallways. Each side of this area also has access to the sewers, which you don't see in TF2. At least not in Capture the Flag well. But when you get out of the water, you'll also find that the left side of the base has a ladder that'll bring you past the indoor balcony to this roof area which has a complete view of the whole center of the map. Which uh, is pretty easy to see why it wasn't brought over to TF2. But as you'd expect, the enemy side of the base just mirrors yours. So back to the flag zone, while they do vaguely have the same layout, with the flag being raised up in the center and a bottom and top floor path, they are overall pretty different. The TFC version has a bridge with more sewers to the side, and taking the right one will bring you to the enemy spawn. Yeah, you could just go in there. Um, a turret on the ceiling will gun you down, but uh, you could do it, there's nothing stopping you. And then taking the left tunnel will bring you to a dead end where a grate will block your path. That is, unless you're playing Demoman, 
who can use his special debt pack to blow it open. So you just place that down, and dramatically underestimate the size of the explosion, and kablammo! You're dead! But also the gate's open. And as far as I'm aware, it just stays open for the rest of the game. After that, you'll be able to access the flag area through the sewers from the outside of the base. And, I mean, that's kinda cool, I guess, but doesn't it ultimately feel pretty pointless? Like, I imagine at some point early on in the game, a Devilman's probably gonna blow it open, so why not have it open to begin with? But uh, once you're there, you can take one of these two elevators to access the flag at the top of the tower, and then you can press this button to open the gate and make a quick escape out the front. But just like with TFC's 2 Fort, you don't bring the flag back to your flag, but instead to a special capture area. This time, the capture area is the silo below the flag. And you can also enter your enemy's capture area too, which is kind of funny. You can just be waiting in there for them to come back. And, uh, oh yeah, one thing is that in the 2 Fort video, I said that both flags returned after 60 seconds when they're dropped, because that's what the wiki says, but in TFC, it actually takes 65 seconds. Doing these types of videos, I've come to notice that a lot of information about TFC on the wiki is kind of dubious. So, uh, I wouldn't always take it at face value. But hey, that's, that's all well and good. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, uh, and which, which well is the better well? I mean, you know, it's the TF2 one, and you would hope it would be. They're both very simple maps overall, but oddly enough, the TF2 one is simpler, and I think that works to its favor. There's less sewers, there's no elevators in the capture area, there's no path that only Delman can blow up, uh, there's no doors you need to press a button to open, and, uh, hey, they had a lot more time to figure out what works and what doesn't, and what's needed and what's not. But of course, I can see why this would have been one of the more popular maps in Quake Team Fortress, and it's easy to see why it transitioned to TF2 pretty... well. <laughs> oh, funny! It's funny every time! But, uh, of the four maps brought over from TFC to TF2, there is one so different that I feel like I can't justify making a standalone comparison video because there's very little to compare. So, uh, I'll add it as a bonus to this one. The Badlands we know in TF2 is basically completely different from the one in TFC. The TFC one is Capture the Flag, where the TF2 one is 5 CP with an Arena and King of the Hill variant. And the TFC version is basically like a giant canyon with multiple levels and a lot of thin ledges. I do think it looks kind of cool for what it is, but this definitely would not have worked in a game like TF2. Especially without grenade jumping, for most classes, if you fell into the pit, you'd just have to find a ladder to get back out. And speaking of grenade jumping, you can't actually get on top of any of these rocks. You'll just hit your head on the sky. And uh, yes, this middle area does have a bridge, kind of like TF2's Badlands, though it does go the other direction, and is much smaller, and really only has a passing resemblance, if that. But there are a lot of spires in this Badlands, somewhat like the second capture point in the TF2 one, though in TFC, they're basically just obstacles to block out parts of the map. Though if you do get stuck at the bottom of the canyon, there are these little tunnels to enter the base, and you'll come to a lot of tight corridors where you can find the flag and spawn, as well as two sniper perches. But this right here is the part of the map that TF2 Badlands clearly draws the most inspiration from. It might be the only part. There's an entrance in the front, as well as one on the side, and a balcony area that leads into the base. So it's kinda close, at least they have one thing in common. But overall though, this Badlands has very little to do with the sequel version. And despite liking the aesthetic, I don't really like the TFC version all too much, it's kind of a mess. But uh, what I do like is the original concept art for the CTF version of TF2 Badlands from 2006. You can tell that it's still trying to keep that canyon-esque design from the first version, with these deep valleys between buildings and the rocks, and it's very cool looking concept art. It's always fun to see what could have been, but uh, I like the Badlands we have now. I think the changes they made were for the best. Now if only we could finally get good lands. Alright, uh, I promise next time we will get Spy vs. Spy for TFC vs. TF2. That's gonna be next, it's, it's coming. Eventually. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching this video, and a special thanks to my patrons like Varric, Captain Forex, Egox, Colonel, Probably Vinegar, Caponicus, Kelso the Pirate, Pillsman's Fox, Some Crazy Idiot, Azond, She Shells, Salt God, Lavi, Tope, Time Consuming, Man 344, Nolan 46, and Melodici. And uh, peace out, dogs. <laughs>